That's all right. That's all right with me. Tim <laughs> 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 Kia ora tato. Kia ora tato. I'll bring the room to order, please. Welcome to this first council meeting of 2023. Um, apologies for the slightly late start. We have a matter of an urgent nature that we need to address today. Um, we've got some revised recommendations alongside that, so if they're not uh, ready in time, we will adjourn the meeting shortly until we can get them underway, but democracy services are working as hard as they can. Welcome to our councillors, community board representatives, um, our iwi representatives sitting around the table today, and council staff. Um, also some members of the public in attendance today, welcome, very welcome. So um, I'm going to ask uh, Andre Baker to start with a karakia, and then we'll have the council blessing. あ、てなこと I know it is the Asua, the Papua If the Asua told Master Kaihanga, Kakia Hote Mara Matanga, Mikiora Yaku to Kore, Kimata, my Jamo Tika, Mikiora. We see a Kiritun, we see a matter of Sawaroha, Eroto Tina Huhin. Pakakia Mata Pakaro, a matter of my Katoa, it's a way worker. Sister is your own of Pakamaua, Yakina. Um, may I just take the liberty, Your Honour, of first of all thanking you to allow me to open our proceedings this morning. And in my karaki, I wanted to acknowledge um, the discovery of the two papaku on the southern end of Kakati Island late yesterday. Um, the, the, we, we obviously, with authorities, have been in communication with each other. Arahui will be placed on uh, the island covering limited and restricted access from Dangatira Point, Waiarua, this morning at 10 o'clock. Um, and that's really just to, for us as a community to pay our respects because that person's identification has not yet been concluded. And so as the district, it's important we stop and pause and take a moment to reflect on that individual um, who has arrived from either the north or the south in our waters, amongst our ika, in our moana, um, and to wish those that are responsible for determining who they are and alerting their families respectfully from us all, um, our, our deepest sympathy. So I just wanted to convey that to you so you understand that with the messaging as part of our karaki this morning as the council and the community of this district to pay our respects. And then we'll turn up into the light, into the living, into the here and now, um, as we proceed with our meeting this morning. So thank you for the honour, um, Mayor Bennett, uh, to open our proceedings this morning. And I wish you all the very best, not just for today, but for our, our year ahead. Thank you. Kia ora. <laughs> so um, who would like to deliver the council blessing? Would you like to do that, Councillor Halliday? Councillor Halliday? I think he's just finding it in his agenda.
As we deliberate on the issues before us, we trust, trust that we will reflect positively on the communities we serve. Let us all seek to be effective and just so that with courage, vision and energy, we provide positive leadership in a spirit of harmony and compassion. Thank you. Um, kia ora for that karakia and that message today, uh, Mr Baker, much appreciated. And thank you for that, uh, Councillor Halliday. Uh, item three, apologies. Do we have any apologies today? I note I note, I note that Councillor Coe is on a leave of absence. Um, I believe we have an apology from Mr Mansell and um, Michael Moore, um, Deputy Chair of the Waikanae Community Board, welcome. Do we have any other apologies? So I'll ask for somebody to move that apology from Mr Mansell. Uh, moved by Councillor Pavanov, seconded by Councillor Hanford. All in favour, please say aye. 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 That's carried. We move on to item four. Declarations of interest relating to items on the agenda. Do we have any of those today? Doesn't seem so. Uh, we have no petitions, no hearings. Uh, public speaking time for items relating to the agenda. I don't believe we've had anybody coming along today. Um, I'll note that we had a very productive public forum prior to this meeting today um, with a discussion with a few members of the community about items not on the agenda and that was very valuable and I thank those who attended during that session. Item 8, members business. Leave of absence, do I have any requests? We are generally defaulting to um, requesting that through the Mayor's office and there'll be a report coming to uh, outline that process um, in due course. Matters of an urgent nature. I believe we have a matter of an urgent nature today. Is Steffi here? So um, we're actually working on that at the moment. So I know we've just started the meeting but I will now adjourn the meeting while we prepare that information so that we can consider it. So. Um, We'll re-adjourn at 5 to 12. Thank you. Uh, five, five, to, five, to, five to 10. Five to 10. Five to 10. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're not taking off until lunchtime. <laughs>
where it says the three representatives will alternate um, attendance, uh, I would change Will to May. Uh, will is an instruction that says you will have a different person each time. Uh, may means you may have a different person each time. I'm happy to accept that. Can we have yeah. some nods around the table or shakes if you don't agree? Um, getting an okay from staff around that. Are you happy to move that with that yep. um, with that yeah, modification? Yeah, yep. That's moved by Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Halliday. Or have you got a question? Yeah, feel free to Pretty ask a question. Chair. I just had a question in Part B, and it's in relation to um, it says the charitable trust was presented uh, the. Um, Review conducted by Atealu Kipa Kalamatai, Charitable Trust, presented to Council on June 22. Can I just ask, when did Council actually receive that report? Do I have an answer to that? Do we have a date? An approximate date Chief is fine. Executive. It's the 7th of June, is the advice I've just been given. Yes, we are. Oh, we have. We have Ms McDougall online. Hello, Janice. Morena. Um, uh, uh, possibly Councillor Halliday's question was referring to when we initially um, received the report from Atiawa, um, which without the dates in front of me, um, I recall was around October, um, I think, 2020. That's all right. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Halliday. Councillor Bravanov. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> so just following along the similar light to Councillor Wilson, um, point B, it says that Council note that uh, Te Awa Ki Whakarongatai will return. Wouldn't we be to say is returning? Well, will is, you know, it's a bit like an instruction as, as Councillor Wilson mentioned because they are actually returning, I assume, which is which is great news. Well, I, well, maybe maybe it's in, in process, I don't know. Um, but then I'll, actually, maybe we'll just... I might just, I might just that check in with <coughs> Andre. Appreciate the, the conversation, councillors. We withdrew from Te Whakameninga. We never showed any intention of um, removing ourselves from that um, partnership um, that we have with this council. Um, and we indicated at the time, in, in fact, in 2019, um, that our dissatisfaction would lead to us conducting an independent review, which you as the council funded. Um, and that was because we felt that we could provide some clarity regarding our dissatisfaction and we had directions through annual general meetings to consider whether or not Te Whakameninga was delivering and meeting all of our expectations. <clears throat> so we notified the Mayor formally that we would withdraw. It was never an intention to completely uh, isolate ourselves from Te Whakameninga. Um, the review which we brought back to this table, which was received and adopted, and has led to the ability for mana whenua as, your, as elected representatives of their iwi to sit here alongside you um, was always going to require us to review our um, continued involvement with Te Whakameninga and that's why we purposely notified the Mayor formally that we couldn't, we wouldn't just simply attend council and committee or council meetings, we needed to reactivate our involvement with Te Whakameninga. And our expectation is that Council will sit down with us and we will review the memorandum of partnership that um, formally recognises your relationship with mana whenua. So I hope that provides some clarity and I appreciate um, the questions regarding the narrative that you're being asked to adopt. Oh, yeah. I, th I think bearing that in mind, that um, there's a discussion still to be had that will is appropriate, the appropriate word. Thank you. Okay? So I, I have a further question to that, and Mr Baker touched on it. So it's my understanding that 
that the um, MOU has to be um, <coughs> signed off within six months of the election. Is that um, is that what council staff are working towards? <coughs> council staff. Janice is happy to answer that. Um, yes, uh, that is the requirement, and uh, this will be an agenda item at the upcoming meeting for Te Whakameninga or Kapiti amongst other conversations, um, which is, of course, the first opportunity we've had to explore that with our iwi partners this triennium. It's the first Te Whakameninga meeting. Thank you very much. Do I have any further questions? I have an indication from Councillor Wilson that he's happy to move these motions, A, B and C, with that slight alteration. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Kirby, right of introduction. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say um, this is great and um, I think the, the return to, uh, to Whakameninga uh, strengthens the group and I think that's a, a, my personal view is that it's a very welcome, that's a very welcome um, step. Um, and just in terms of council, the effectiveness of council's engagement with mana whenua, I think that assists that as well. I think it's a, it's a fabulous step and I think everyone should be congratulated who's involved in that. Any further debate? I'll just talk, talk all those comments. Um, I think it's absolutely wonderful. We have all three partners back um, around the table at Te Whakameninga or Kapiti. I, I, I truly respect the decision that was made by Te Atiawa to review and refresh the relationship with Council. Um, I'm also really pleased that these appointments complete our process of iwi appointments to our Council and committees and subcommittees. And I want to say how thrilled I am with the, the response, the speed of the response from, um, from our iwi <coughs> and also the quality of people that we have coming to sit around our table. Um, truly a, a, a wonderful addition and a highly valued members of our um, committees and council. So with that, I'll put the recommendations A, B and C. Moved by Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Kirby. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. That's carried. So item nine, Mayor's report, a little list of activities has been tabled. I won't read it out at this point, so the other councillors know what I've been up to. And then we move on to reports. So on page six of your agendas, fees framework for non-elected members, 2022 to 2025 triennium. We'll just have the report presented by Ms. Halfow. Tena Koto, councillors. Um, this report seeks your approval for the non elected members' fees framework for this triennium. So, when we have um, meetings where non elected members attend, um, we can reimburse them for those meetings. Um, I just wanted to outline that we have this year, which is different to last year, we have actually suggested three different remuneration brackets. Um, and one is specifically for Te Whakameninga. So we have the, um, the first level, which is for all community representatives on the Grants Allocation Subcommittee, and the Social Sustainability uh, Subcommittee and the Climate and Environment Subcommittee, if the community boards wanted to appoint community representatives what, rather than one of their own. Um, that is the bottom level. Um, then one up is the Whakamininga or Kapiti, and we've specifically recommended a slightly higher remuneration for that um, because there is extra work involved bringing everything back to their iwi and having discussions and also understanding te ao Māori, te reo Māori and all of those um, capabilities that come with that. And then the last one is the Risk and Assurance Committee and there will be an independent chair and member appointed to that. That is still in progress and for that we recommend a separate remuneration as per the um, Cabinet Fees Framework. So we've 
route to that framework. Um, I can take any questions if there are any. Councillor Pravanov. Thank you. Through um, the Mayor, thank you. Um, so just a couple of questions. In relation to the um, vehicle mileage which, and the childcare, I assume that they are the same as for elected members, is that correct? So we are recommending that we base that on what is um, in the elected members yes. remuneration policy, which we'll discuss as the next item. Yes. yes. So in terms of the vehicle mileage, is that actually tax free or not tax free? Right. <laughs> um, I think it is tax free, but I'd have to go back and actually double check that. Sorry, I didn't prepare for that question specifically. Does anyone know? <laughs> I think we'll take that question offline and yep. we'll provide okay. a, a response to all elected members around that. Thank you. Um, the yeah. second question relates to um, the maximum fee per hour. Yes. Is that actually set in the, le the legislation or is that something that has been determined by this council? So uh, we have based that on the cabinet fees framework and they have a clear process set out in that framework. They. Um, and you will see that in the um, framework appended to the report. It, it has criteria that have to be assessed. So those criteria were assessed based on the size of this council and what sort of skills and um, function scope of those um, committees. And then based on that, it gives us a fee level score. And based on that score, it gives us a range. And within that range, council, um, can appoint anywhere within that range. So this is for childcare? Sorry, oh sorry, no, I did not, um, I misunderstood your question. Yes. So, so the, the, the maximum fee is $15 per yes. hour, and I'm just wondering whether that's set in the legislation or That is set in the remuneration authority determination, and we're simply suggesting that we apply the same amount to oh. non-elected members. Because yes. I, I, I suppose I had a bit of a dig around, and I could see that there was a set upper limit Yes. But, that, but there was no actual hourly rate. Um, let me check the next report just quickly, sorry. So there is an annual, um, annual max maximum amount, total amount, that elected members can't exceed. However, we're not really expecting that non-elected members would ever come near, yes. anywhere near that amount. Yes, so the question is, where did the $15 per hour come from? That also came from the remuneration authority oh. determination, and that's the same for elected oh. members. So that is set in that determination. Okay, yes. I only saw that $6,000. No, it definitely okay. has the fifteen dollars okay. okay. in there as well. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Halliday. Through you, Madam Chair, I've got a few, not a few questions, but I have some questions here. Um, first one um, is in regards to number thirteen on page seven. Um, it talks to um, a remuneration in regards to uh, people. Actually, my first question is: is there's a new category being put in for Te Rakaminanga? And I'm just curious to know, have, have those representatives been paid in the past? Um, is, is this, have they not been remunerated in the past? No, they have been remunerated in the past, um, oh, but know. it was the same level set for community representatives on the grants allocation subcommittee. Okay. And we've just made an assessment that that possibly okay, was a bit low. Um, second question uh, relates to just clarifying, uh, refers to um, fees payable to non-elected members attending Te Whakaminanga or Kapiti and art confederation meetings. Um, are these two separate meetings? I've been along to the Te Whakamina meetings, but I don't recall going to any art meetings as such. Um, so do we, how does, how does that work? What, what, what's an art confederation meeting? Is that a council meeting or is it a non-council meeting? It's not an official, uh, so it's not run by our team, so I may have to defer that to Janet. Um, so uh, in the past there were um, in addition to the meeting and meetings, um, another tier of meetings that happened up, uh, happened outside of the formal um, to meeting structure, where items that required um, more detailed focus and workshopping um, were discussed with representatives from 
the three iwi of the art confederation. So often what would happen is that at a te whakamining a meeting, um, members of the committee would suggest to council staff bringing forward work that um, a more detailed conversation with what was known within the council as the art forum, as to, as, which, which was essentially a meeting of staff and representatives of all three iwi to cover off detail. It is a number of years since um, those sessions have um, have happened in quite that way, but we maintain a reference to it within the fee structure on the basis that um, potentially Te Whakameninga could choose to re-establish that kind of approach. Okay, well, we could set the one down the track if need be. Okay, that's cool. Um, Sorry, I just have, um, um, Mr Baker has something to add to that and then we'll carry on with the rest of your certainly. question. Appreciate the question. Could I perhaps just provide an example? Uh, when COVID hit, the three iwi um, we're in consultation with this council regarding our approach. And I guess the ultimate outcome uh, here for us in our district was the establishment of the COVID hub, which was iwi led. But in those early stages when we were needing to react and to respond to the modeling that was done um, in Tatiawa, uh, we're in consultation with the DHB and other health professionals to try and get um, a measurement of what it might mean should COVID impact on our district. Um, there was an absolute need for us to be in consultation with our local authority because of course the predictions from the modelling was that Māori in particular uh, would be hit uh, pretty badly if COVID arrived here in those times. So I'll just give you that example so it gives you an understanding about the offline conversation that needed to occur at that time. And some of those elected members that have been here for some time might recall the reference to the art forum. And that was what it was termed in those early times when there was a need to engage directly with mana whenua regarding matters that impacted upon us and in fact the, the district of Kapiti. Thank you for the um, response, um, Andre, much appreciated. I guess the reason I brought it up is just um, from a remuneration perspective, things have changed quite dramatically since then um, as well. So it was just um, from an elected member's perspective, I guess, you know, we are, um, there's a certain obligation, well, not a certain obligation, a complete obligation for us to attend a lot of things, and it's part of the remuneration package we get um, as such. Remuneration packages have been set for um, for Manu Whenua, represented re representation. I'll just more curious, and I think this is all part of a longer conversation with regards to how relevant that is now to the people that are representing because um, uh, un, I guess people can be uh, from the Manukau perspective on multiple meetings uh, point in case the, the representatives are here at the moment. I think this is more moving into debate, Councillor yeah, okay. Holiday, rather than a question. No, fair call. All right. Um, other question I have. Um, sorry, it's thrown me out a little bit. Um, the free structure has been based on the cabinet um, the cabinet um, process or the, ca the cabinet structure. That's quite a high process. I note here on um, number seven, I don't have a page number on that one, sorry, because it's not on the um, agenda. Uh, number seven, that uh, any appointments made by committee to its committees and subcommittees align with group four. Is that group four that levels? Because I note on the, uh, the um, graph or the panel uh, number 19, that the remuneration level is level three, mm -hmm. level three, and then for the risk and assurance, level one. Mm -hmm. And having a look at the um, cabinet definition of what level one, that's very, very, very high standard of, um, of skill sets. Uh, yet uh, the um, standard for level four was what we would call our audit and risk committee. That's the level that our audit and risk would be at, level four. So that's three levels above that um, with regard to that. That's um, uh, government of inquiry type level serious decision making and that sort of scenario. I was just wondering why we've used that structure. Because, and the reason I say that is because we're a small council. <coughs> I guess another question is that cabinet, um, that cabinet determination, is that across New Zealand? It's not relevant to the size of the councils because our remuneration is based on the size of us as a council, um, if that makes sense. So in other words, say for Auckland, um, a, um, council, a, a person who's on that committee might be getting paid double the amount that we as councils are getting paid. Um, whereas 
we have a, and their budgets well, and their incomes are completely different than ours, they're a lot larger. Is our scale of using that table relevant to the size of our community and the size of the budgets we have to play with? I wonder if that's more a, a wider political question than a question for staff, but I'll let them try well, and I'm just wondering, we're, we're, we're Can looking at paying an hourly rate here, or a, a, sorry, a meeting rate or a daily rate based on that. Yeah, um, Je that Je Janice, Janice has, is going to try and answer your question, Councillor Halliday. Thank you. Uh, we have a, you know, we have a long, well, I was going to say long standing. It has been our practice um, in recent times at least to use this as um, the basis for decisions around fees. And I acknowledge the councillor's comments about um, the variation between, um, you know, the complexity of the activities that would happen across different councils of different sizes, representing areas, um, you know, with different populations and different needs. Uh, and although uh, we could explore whether or not there are other um, avenues um, for setting, enabling us to set the right um, approach for now, um, we have a need to um, get a fee structure in place as the triennium is getting underway in our committee meetings and other, um, and other events are getting underway. Uh, and the, well, what we've put in front of you, we think, is um, are consistent with how we have been doing it and appropriate for now. That doesn't preclude us from taking offline a conversation around whether or not for future frameworks there might be um, other models that we could look at. Thank you for that answer. Uh, my next question uh, revolves around um, the um, reimbursement aspect. The cabinet guidelines, because the fees are so high, uh, that's inclusive of those expenses, not exclusive. Um, so we've used the cabinet guideline for the actual figure, but we've used our elections guideline or our, our uh, own own uh, our own community guideline, if you like, with regards to the um, expenses remuneration aspect. To me, that's double dipping uh, with regards to things. Uh, we either use one or we use the other. We don't take that out of that one and that out of that one. Um, yeah. I can make some references to um, where that's written in the is policy. There a is there, there a question like. in there? Well, yes, um, I guess if we're voting on this, um, what, uh, I, I'm, I'm not that happy with, um, uh, with um, the fact that um, the um, cabinet rate is inclusive of travel expense, childcare expense as such. Um, it's not exclusive of it. Um, so why are, we, why are we adding that to the mix as well? Um, it's, that's, that, that to me just appears to be double dipping. Uh, I see the intent, don't get me wrong, but it's pretty. I thought it was pretty clear in what's written here um, that that's actually picked up. And I'm just looking for the reference that I had down in relation to that. Just be with me for a second. Can I just have a clarification from staff um, that the cabinet remuneration includes expenses? We're just having a look at that now. It's under section D. Number 82, sorry. Do you mean paragraph 82? Uh, yes, uh, paragraph 82. My apologies for not getting to you earlier. I've just noted there, note number 82. Um, uh, payment for time spent in travel to meetings, sitting on boards, uh, allowance fees, and uh, childcare expenses is 86. So it's 82 through to 86. Page, uh, sorry, page 37. Or 18 of the um, of the guide uh, it says members are not paid for time spent in travel to and from meetings or on body expenses except in instances where a daily fee is paid and the member has to travel long distance. And in childcare, under exceptional circumstances, a contribution may 
be made to childcare expenses with the agreement of the chair. However, it is generally expected that the daily fee paid is adequate to meet out-of-pocket expenses of individual members, as well as reimbursing them for their time spent. So it doesn't preclude um, childcare expenses? Uh, it, well, I guess if nothing precludes anything, uh, we can make a vote around the table and, and agree to anything if we like. Um, but I think that um, the, uh, my interpretation of what the Cabinet paper says is that those expenses are actually covered by the higher daily and, uh, or meeting rate that's being applied here. Yeah, thank you. Mr Edwards? Thanks, Councillor Hillary. I, I, don't, I don't want to um, minimise anything, but I come back to what we were saying before. We're a council that, um, and I'm not referring, I guess, to the fact that um, the, the level of uh, commitment that we have in the roles or the decisions we have to make are any more or less than a larger council. It's just that, that um, the uh, payment that we receive as councillors is, is, is in relation to population size. Um, and um, in, in relation to that, um, yeah, it, we're applying quite a high meeting rate um, as such um, to, uh, for people to attend these meetings. That's fine. Um, but that high rate in that particular thing is um, supposed to cover that. That's my take of this. Thanks, Councillor Halliday. I'm through you, Madam Chair. I have to hear for this. And this doesn't have to be resolved by this minute, yes, necessarily. Sure. I don't know. But page 38 of Appendix 2, um, which also discusses reimbursing expenses, uh, which touches upon members travelling to and from meetings uh, and, and, and the entitlement to reimbursement for out-of-pocket travel, meals and accommodation, etc. I'm assuming that's if they're moving from, and the, the take I had on that is if they're coming to meetings from around the country um, rather than just down the road as such. And it's quite a significant difference. I mean, this, I'm assuming this cabinet format, again, why the, um, the, uh, the decision-making process is that these, I mean, Group 1, Royal Commission, Public Inquiries and Government Inquiries. Um, group 2, Statutory Tribunals. Um, group 3, Governance Bodies. We actually, as councillors, fit in at Level 3. We're not even up at Level 1. Um, so it's, 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 it's we're, we're, we're not comparing apples with apples here. Um, we, we're using the framework for one set of remuneration, and then we're using a different framework for another set of remuneration. And it's more than likely fairly insignificant, I know, but we are supposed to be keeping an eye on the first screens, uh, and um, I think it's relevant. Um, Councillor, can I just make one distinction? We're, we haven't included any travel time, just mileage. So they're I, not going to be reimbursed for travel time. Correct. Um, yeah, yeah. And, okay. and because it's mileage, I'm, again, even more so, it's picked up in the meeting fee structure, not separate. Yeah. 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 True. Yeah. I, I think I think we're moving into debate there. So we, so we've got a policy in front of us. I don't think we're going to change it on the fly. So if you have a problem with that, then you need to debate that and make a judgment call according to that when we come to it on the agenda. So I'm curious. Um, Do you have any further questions along any other lines, Councillor Halliday? No, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm just curious to know when we are supposed to uh, make changes to these sorts of documents if we can't make them. Here, then why didn't we have workshop this beforehand? Or where are we supposed to make these recommendations? Debate won't change this. I'll have to go, sorry, I don't vote for this whole thing um, as such, whereas it's actually a fairly minor part of all this. But um, I'm happy to go with the table on this. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a fair enough question. When, if, if we wanted to make changes to this document, how would we go to this policy? How would we go about doing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, thanks, Councillor Halliday. I was expecting this to fly. Um, through you, Madam Chair, obviously policies can be uh, can be amended um, at any stage or through amendment uh, if that is the way that you want to travel with this uh, with this report. So, would we be able to make changes today, or would we bring it back? Madam, I'd be quite happy for it to stay as it is, and we just see how it goes. And if it's an issue. It may not be an issue, to be honest, and we might not get people making 
friends in this situation, but I just, it's maybe dotting an I and crossing a T, but I did think it was relevant. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next. Oh, Janice? No, so I mean, if one, one possibility would be to move a recommendation to bring it back to the table in, say, six months, but I wouldn't recommend doing that at this stage. Um, Councillor Wilson? Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, I was happy to move the recommendation here. I think it's worth noting that the total the total cost here is $24,000. And you start getting into the periphery of it, you're talking about you know, pocket change. Just That's why I was happy to move the recommendation right at the top of the show here. Still Thank am. you. So we'll just finish questions and I note your foreshadowing. <coughs> Councillor Cooper. Yeah, well, I think we should be a council that, that respects every cent, to be quite honest. So um, that's debate. Do you have any questions around yeah, that? Yeah, I'd like to move we lay this on the table or um, um, lay this on the table till it is properly assessed and we can make, you know, make, a, re re make a recommendation. Uh, clearly, from, from my understanding, from what Councillor Hadley has said, it, it is double dipping. So, and I, I, I is, think we should are, are recommend we leave it on the table. So, are you Can moving a back? procedural motion to lay it on the table? Yeah, please. Do I have a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Pavanov. There is no debate because it's a procedural motion. All in favour say aye. 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 Against? No. Aye. Um, we've got a Councillor Pravalov has called for a division. All in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Pravanov. Oh, hang on. I don't read them out. <laughs> Councillor Pravanov. Oh, thank you. Councillor Pravanov, Councillor Cooper. Against? Oh, gosh, bear with me. Everybody else. <laughs> Everybody else. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's do it properly, though. So, can we just have those uh, against, please? I'm going to do this alphabetically. Uh, Your Worship, the Mayor, uh, Councillor Kirby. Gosh. Councillor Wilson, Councillor Hansford, Councillor Coford, Councillor Spires, Councillor Warwick. Uh, Councillor Halliday. Uh, I, no, I, Councillor Halliday, if I have. Uh, so that, that procedural motion is lost. I'll now look for somebody to move the substantive motion. Councillor Wilson, are you happy to move? Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Coford. Any debate? No. Councillor Kirby. Just waiting for the microphone. Um, I just want to, in the debate, I think um, I agree with what Glenn said. I think every we need to be accountable for every cent, and I think this is a good pick by Martin, and we need to be consistent with what we're doing with this. But I also um, am for getting this motion through because we need it for our committees to operate. Um, and so I think we need to take offline how we correct uh, how we correct the policy outside of this because we need this policy in place so that we can make these committees work um, with funding but I think every cent does count and we do need to look at it um, and we can try and be consistent with how we're applying frameworks in different <coughs> locations. So those are my comments in the debate. Thank you Councillor Kirby. Any further debate? I'll put that then. All in favour please say aye. 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 Against? Uh, we've had a division called. All in favour, please raise your hand. Paul Bro. Oh, gosh, thank you. Paul Bro. Uh, Lawrence. Kirby. Kirby. Spires. Spires. Hanford. Hanford. Warwick. Warwick. Coford. Coford. Halliday. Halliday and Wilson. <laughs> and against? Cooper and Pravanov. Thanks. Uh, so that motion is carried. Thank you for the preparation time that's gone into that report and 
for your questions and um, comments, elected members. Certainly we do need to be robust with our decision making around any expense. So uh, page 61 now, elected members remuneration, expenses and allowances policy. Now looking to our elected members. Allocations. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, um, this report asks Council to adopt the elected members remuneration expenses and allowances policy. Um, the policy summarises all of the remuneration set by the remuneration authority, all of the expenses and the allowances that are also set by the remuneration authority. We, I just wanted to point out that the um, remuneration has not actually been gazetted yet. We have passed it on to the remuneration authority. We don't expect any changes. We expect them to um, just accept it the way it's been said. However, if they do come back with something, we would just bring it back to council. But in you adopting the, um, the policy, it just makes it clear what the expenses and allowances are that can be claimed and just makes it easy and accessible. I can answer any questions you may have. Questions? Councillor Halliday. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, just want to clarify something, and I'm sorry, this is all part of the um, remuneration aspect from uh, an Whenua perspective. It's not in a negative. I'll make that perfectly clear. But I just want to clarify, councillors attend workshops and briefings, uh, and it's, it's part of the requirement uh, or the obligation um, for them to do so. With regards to um, our mana whenua who are uh, coming to the uh, meetings, is there a, um, what, what's, what's the story on workshops um, as such, or, or is that included in part of the remuneration aspect? Or, or, or uh, again, we haven't discussed what's the expectation, what, what do our mana whenua partners think is, is, is there? That's, that's not something I think it's been clarified. Well, I'm not aware of um, the requirement in that space or what the obligation will is in that space. Um, I just want to preface this that that's not part of this policy, but so, so the Manafeno remuneration is not set in this policy. But no. yes, so the um, remuneration that was part of um, Recommendation Z earlier, which was passed in November 2022, mm. that does include attendance at workshops and briefings for Manafeno. Okay, yes, that's cool. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Pavanov. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, on page um, 67, um, it lays out, um, I suppose, the roles of the Mayor and the various Chairs and, and um, other councillors. So I'm just, um, and, and we've had conversations here around um, what occurs, how, how is um, situation managed where you have a chair of a committee as well as one of those councillors having additional responsibilities because that doesn't seem to have been addressed in this remuneration? I would, I would, can I, may I try and answer that? I would think that there are many additional responsibilities that aren't outlined within this policy. Um, it outlines the major um, additional um, responsibilities, but there are certainly other um, responsibilities and roles that elected members undertake, including um, appointments to external organisations, and they're not all itemised within this report. I think it's just an expectation that we, you, when you're an elected member, that's what you kind of sign up to do. Thank you. Um, I, I suppose I'm just following on on um, a situation where an elected member's expectation, or it's expected that they will be doing basically a month's work, um, basically free. Um, and so I'm just wondering how that fits into, for example, and I'm not trying to pick out Councillor Wilson, how that relates to the workload that he receives, uh, that he carries out in relation to his um, additional duties. Steffi, thank you. Um, so Councillor Wilson's extra duties as the District Licensing Committee Chair, is that what you're referring to? That is actually set separately under the Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act. So that's one um, duty that is 
remunerated on top of being a councillor. Everything else is remunerated as part of the governance pool and that's set by the remuneration authority. So it is legislated that there is a pool that can be allocated as council wishes and that was done um, last year on the 24th of November, I believe. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would like to have more conversations around this and no doubt there, is a, there are processes of actually um, having more conversations with external parties as to how this could be resolved. Thank you. Is that correct? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll follow that up. Okay, yeah. thank you. Any further questions? So I'm looking for somebody to move 3A on page 61. Moved by Councillor Halliday, seconded by Councillor Hanford. Any debate? All in favour, please say aye. Oh, aye. is that debate? Oh, right of introduction. Oh, look, um, I just wanted to um, thank the CEO with regards to point 30, um, paying out um, the uh, full amount of remuneration um, to councillors and community board members over the Christmas period it was very much appreciated. I know it would have been retrospectively paid further on down the track, um, but uh, I know from my perspective that it was very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, um, to talk with that comment. So all in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, the next... Thank you very much, Steffi, for the work that's gone into this. And to all the other governance arrangements that have been undertaken since the beginning of the triennium. I'll now welcome Glenn Cooper uh, to present Waka Kotahi Investment Procedural Audit Report. Not Glenn Cooper. <laughs> Who's one of our councillors? Oh, I'm not having the best day, am I? Glenn O'Connor. Glenn O'Connor. Uh, good, good morning, and uh, thank you for that introduction, Madam Mayor. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am the other Glenn. Uh, I'm pleased to present the Waka Kotahi Investment uh, Procedural Audit Report uh, to the table today. Uh, happy to take the paper as read and answer any questions. Any questions? Councillor Halliday. Oh, Councillor Spires first, actually. Let Cathy go first. Um, I know this is a bit off topic, but it's still the same. I know this is an accountability report <laughs> from uh, Waka Kotahi to council, but sometimes I feel that Waka Kotahi need to be accountable as well. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. who sets the priorities? Is it council or and for the funding? So does council have their priorities or does Waka Kotahi come in and say, no, these are the priorities? And as we see them and fund for what they say are the priorities and not what council is saying after listening to the community? A uh, bit on that question, councillor. Um, broadly speaking, uh, the government sets its transport priorities through the government policy statement on transport. That's the headline document that's issued every three years to the country. Uh, covers from memory a 10 year span and that sets our direction as a country on, on, on transport. Uh, that document can change flavour. Uh, I, I think a good, a good comparison is the flavour in the last two or three years has focused more on uh, non-motor vehicles, i.e. walking and cycling, and the GPS has had a different swing that way. Uh, broadly speaking, the GPS uh, allocates funding through bands and uh, safety, uh, which I think you're referencing, is one of those bands. Uh, highways, for example, is another band. Local roads, which, which we deal with, are another band. And, and money is allocated through that. Uh, that becomes the um, National, Land Trans, uh, National Land Transport Program. We then have a nation, uh, Regional Land Transport Program, which is our Regional Transport Committee, which gets down to a regional area. Our council rep that sits on the, on the um, regional land transport represents our council and that's how it gets down to a council uh, level. Uh, when we come to funding, every three years through the LTP, uh, Waka Kotahi's process runs sort of in parallel, but they, they are two different machines that run at two different speeds and have two different agendas and two different templates. Uh, but in theory, they run together and there is a series of iterations where the national uh, national wants, needs and priorities uh, meet, join, sometimes collide with regional priorities and out of that over a period of workshops, over a period of discussions, over a period of 
of different funding rounds, we settle on a, uh, on a national, a regional and a local program for uh, Waka Kotahi's uh, share of their funding. And maybe the key point is Waka Kotahi fund typically a bit over half of, of our council's uh, work and uh, that's when they have a say. If we cho chose as a community or as a, as a council to undertake our own work, um, as long as we uh, comply with relevant laws and legislation as, as we always do, uh, we, can, we can spend our money as we want. But if we want Waka Kotahi's half share, uh, we need to fit in with their, with their processes. But there's a lot more to that, but I can take that offline with you if you like. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's just that there's a lot of road safety issues around schools and with the government and Waka Kotahi wanting to get people out of vehicles and using public transport and walking, then they put, need to put their money where their mouth is, is what I'm saying. But at the same time, um, good report and well done on your uh, achievements of um, accountability. So, good job. Thank you. Now, I'll just, just add to that to say that um, we are hoping to get Emma Spate, the regional manager, in for a chat soon. And um, I'm hoping also that we can, rather than having those updates in, as a briefing, that they can either come to council or be a public workshop so that people can be involved in, and understand better how transport is funded and prioritised mm. through Waka Krutahi and, be, and ask questions and be involved. So, Councillor Halliday. Yes, thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for the answer, Glenn. That covered off my first question. Um, page 152, paragraph 4. Talks to, we noted that the contract term of three plus two plus two years for road maintenance is not consistent with Council's procurement act. But it says Council needs to seek approval from Waka Kohati if Council intend to extend this contract beyond five years. Can you just sort of expand on that a little bit? Because I don't quite, uh, yeah, it'd just be nice to get a little bit more of an understanding about how that works. Uh, certainly. Uh, one of the many documents that that the transport activity has is a document around how we procure, how we buy things. And that gives our funding partners, Waka Kotahi, some assurance that we are actually going to prudently spend their, their half share, um, their many millions that they give us. That document sets out uh, how we're going to procure, what our term of our contracts are, and it identifies the market, the supply market, how we're going to buy, how we're going to work with our suppliers at a very high level. Uh, for whatever reason, when we last submitted our, our document uh, for, a, for our main maintenance contract, we had a term of three plus two years. So a three year initial term plus a two year extension. Uh, in the contract that we, we, we are operating, uh, we've got the potential to go to our main contractor with a three year plus a two year plus another two year extension. So while it's a, while it's a procedural bureaucratic uh, submission, um, our, the reality is our procurement plan doesn't line up with what we what we seek to do in our in our tender document, and we're we're, we're in the process of tidying that up. We've lodged a document with the NZTA to work through that process. They're like first right in your sort of scenario. Yep. Okay, thank you. And the other just the other question I had in relation to um, it's on page 160. Um, that contract I'm assuming is Higgins. Uh, they seem to be doing all our roading um, as such. Uh, correct. Currently, Higgins is our is our major transport supplier. They undertake both our, our road maintenance contract and our resurfacing or reselling contract. And I was just, I was just curious. Uh, sorry, this might be a little bit off track, but um, in regards to there's been some issues with regards to chip seal not being done properly and that sort of scenario, and it's had to be redone um, as such. Is that is there a penalty clause or is there clauses in there that um, means that we're not, uh, or do they have to replace that in kind if we're not happy with it as such? Uh, yes, I do. Lovely, thank you. Councillor Pravanov, I think, is next, is that right? Could you switch your microphone off, please, Martin? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Glenn, for this report. I just want to ask, um, with this audit, so the, so the funding for various projects is, is shared between Council and, and Waka Katahi. So on page um, 156, it talks about the, the town centre connections there. And I suppose um, over the, well, last year, there were many, many delays in relation to the, to the work that was done in Waikanae. And I suppose um, to, there's two issues here. There's the relationship between KCDC and Waka Katahi in terms of um, ensuring that that is actually on time. 
But the other one is that I, my question is that with the delays, I assume that there were, uh, there was a massive overspend in it, which also means that what KCDC has to pay is also um, um, larger than planned as well. Could you, um, cause, and it sort of doesn't really, it actually avoids talking about the financial implications in the audit here. And I'm just wondering if you could actually tease into that, move, talk about that a little bit, please. Yeah, j just to clarify, uh, the revocation process that's happening through our district from uh, Poplar Ave right through to the North Waikanae is a Waka Kotahi funded and delivered process, a project. Uh, council has some uh, aspects of that that it's that it's funding, which is which is largely outside the main carriageway. Uh, as a Waka Kotahi uh, operated funded job, it's not a council program that was audited through this uh, audit. It's not our job. So, in terms of the the ones where you know, like I know in Waikanae, there's mainly it's Waka Kotahi, but there are some elements that that are joint um, KCDC. Um, Waka Katahi funded because of the delays. I'm just interested to know whether that's also had increases in the costs to to council. And no doubt there's other examples around the district as well. I just know more about that one. Uh, slightly off off topic of this report, but to answer your questions, um, any work that's physically <coughs> happened in our district over the last year or two has cost more with with the, with the cost pressures that that I think most of us are aware of. Uh, it is likely that project's um, no no different. Okay, so I suppose it talks about financial processes not um, actually getting down to the tin tax. Okay, thank you. I think it's more that it's limited in its scope to work that we undertake um, as a council. Um, Councillor Wilson? Oh, no? So I'll be looking for a mover for recommendation 3A on page 148. Councillor Halliday, seconded by Councillor Kirby. I'll write a bit of production, Councillor Halliday. Um, Glenn, I just want to congratulate you and your team. Um, I've appreciated the little or not so little extras that you have been able to massage out of the system over the past three years. This is no doubt possible uh, by the team's understanding of the system, the relationship you guys have built, and it's shown in the uh, excellent results you've received from this external audit. Thank you very much. Yes, I'd like to add my congratulations. Um, for those of you who don't have the report in front of you, who might be watching online, we got straight effectives, which is actually straight A's. Um, Waka Kotahi obviously aren't very good at congratulating people. Um, but uh, yeah, a, a perfect report. So um, well done to the team and well done, Glenn O'Connor. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so we'll move on to the revocation of speed limits by law, one six, on page 161. Alan Bight. This Ron Miniama? Minima? Welcome. Good morning. Uh, I don't think you've been at the table before. So uh, I'd like to introduce Ron Minima, who's our transport safety lead. Welcome. So I'll invite Ron to present the report or take it as read and invite questions. Hello everyone, I've got nothing to add to the report, just take it as read, please. Do I have any questions from elected members? No, great question. Happy to move it. Councillor Halliday? Uh, look, just one, just, just for clarity, um, just, just, just <laughs> making perfectly clear that pretty much all speed limits have been taken out of local council hands and pretty much all transferred over to government now. Yep. And this is just confirming all that. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Move. Councillor Wilson's happy to move. Mm. Uh, Councillor Hanford is seconding. Do I have any debate? Demand a succinct summary is excellent. <laughs> Obvi <laughs> oh, obviously a very effective report which gave us all the information we needed to make this decision, which um, it's a procedural decision but an important one because it signals a change in the way we do things with speed limits. So um, we'll look forward to hearing more about that as we progress this work. So um, thank you very much. And I'll put that motion. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. That's carried. Thank you very much.
So we move on to the confirmation of community board representatives, 165. Thank you. So in fact, our structure and delegations work continues. I'm just going to pass around a list of these um, around the table, and in the meantime, I'll get Steffi to introduce the report. Um, kia ora koutou again. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, this report asks Council to confirm the community board representation. And I just wanted to point out, and this is why the handout is going around, um, there is an amendment that um, to the recommendation um, that we're hoping for you to move because there have been additional names proposed since the agenda went out. So it's up to you. So you could either. Can, can I confirm that we now have a complete list of um, I was going to. I get to that not fully there are a couple um of community boards the waikanae community board has yet to put someone forward for the um, social sustainability subcommittee and the romati community board has yet to put someone forward for the risk and assurance committee other than that it is full yes a full list i think that's a fantastic effort and i want to congratulate um i know it's slightly out of order but i want to congratulate the community boards for managing to get through this piece of work and um, it shows what a committed um, group of community board members we have that they're willing to take on these extra responsibilities and I want to thank all the community board members who've put their hands up. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, Councillor Halliday. Uh, through you Madam Chair, it's actually more of a question to you. Um, I'm just curious, um, the uh, members or the committee members that, um, that are now appointed, uh, is there an obligation for them to report back to their respective community boards? as such with regards to their um, committees that they um, will now be on? I would expect that would be up to each community board to organise how and if that happens. Councillor Wilson? Oh no, Councillor Pravano. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so um, this is great that um, we've almost got a full house here. I'm just wondering, um, just for clarity, um, if one of these individuals isn't able to attend a meeting, whether or not they they can um, another representative of that community board can can attend in their place with the, with the same rights, or what is the situation there? So you will note that um, for some of them there has an alternate has been listed, so that alternate could attend and have the same rights. Otherwise, under the governance structure, it also states that any community board member can um, attend any of the meetings and um, sit at the table if the chair was to agree, but they wouldn't have any voting rights. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Councillor Wilson? <coughs> Sorry. I just wanted to note here, this goes back to the elected members' remuneration. Been a bugbear in mind for a long time that the Paikakarihi Community Board have been chronically under remunerated. And this, um, this actually um, puts more emphasis on that. Uh, once upon a time, it was the reason given that Paikakarihi um, wasn't remunerated at the same level of other community boards is because of the size of the population, etc., etc. But when it comes to these things, they are uh, in, you know, this is more work than you would do as a community board member just on your community board. And so I think, uh, I'm not, this is something to have a think about, about how that may be compensated. Just a note. Yeah, I, I agree. That's been a long-standing problem. I've been at the receiving end of that for five years or six years. <laughs> um, Steffi? Um, so at the moment, through the remuneration authority, there is only one mechanism that they could be remunerated more, and that's the governance pool, which would mean that some of the councillors would have to give up um, some of their share. Unfortunately, that's the only way to do that. I 
I thought I thought it was a bit odd. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not quite right. Sorry, I'll, I'll call the table to order. Um, Councillor Pravanov? Thank you. Uh, just to clarify um, Stevie's last <coughs> comment, isn't the pool, the, there's two pools, one for councillors and one for community boards, so if Kaikokariki community board members were paid more, it would actually affect only the other community boards? So the wording's slightly different. Um, for the community boards, it's set by yes. the remuneration authority. There is no allocation of anything. However, it does have a provision in there where it says if a council were to allocate more responsibility than normal right. to a community board, they could decide to give them a slice of their governance board. Right. Okay. So a little bit in between the okay. both. Okay, both of them. thank you for that clarification. Look, I, I, I think that's a really good a really good point and I think we should have a little think about how we address that going forward. Um, it's a little... But for now, let's uh, let's look at the report in front of us, which is con confirmation of these representatives. Um, has it, does everybody feel like they've had a good chance to look at the paper that's gone around the table? So could I have a mover for the recommendation? Happy to move it, Madam Chair. Uh, moved Councillor Warwick, seconded... Oh, move Councillor Halliday, seconded Councillor Warwick. Um, any further debate? I've already done a little waived. bit right at the start. <laughs> right of introduction, Councillor Halliday. No waived, thank you. Waived. Once again, thank you to the boards and to these representatives who've put their hand up, and I look forward to seeing, seeing you around our council committees. Um, so I'll put that to the vote. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against. That's carried. So do we want to take a little comfort break or are we happy to box on? I think we'll stop for, um, come, come back at, come back at 11, 11 15. You're nearly there, Mike. Nearly Sorry there. Nearly there. Well, yeah, no, no, it's fine. Yeah. I do try to keep it yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask. I'll, I'll, call, I'll call this meeting to order. Are you aware that your microphone's on, Councillor Lawson? Um, I'll call the meeting to order. We're continuing on with item, agenda, um, item 11 on the agenda, the confirmation of minutes on page 169. Um, do I have somebody to move the, those minutes? Councillor Wilson, seconded. Councillor Coford, uh, do I have any uh, discussion around those minutes? Yes, you do. Anybody who'd like to resile their, themselves from the something in the minutes? Mm -hmm. I'd like to speak to the uh, right, oh. of, right of introduction, Councillor Wilson. Oh, I actually had a question. That's cool. Oh, okay. <coughs> I'll allow a question after this, that's fine. Yeah. But um, I'll let yeah. Councillor Wilson um, speak. The, the, um, the point I want to raise about the minutes is we had Steve McDowell and Vern Walsh who addressed us uh, about best practice, governance best practice, raised their 
about the minutes and how urgently minutes should be produced. And as they said at that meeting, they should be produced as quickly as possible after the meeting and issued in a draft form. Um, the fact that we only get the minutes now, was this was pointed out how wrong that was. Um, in fact, effectively, if somebody's, if there's some stenographer out there, they could be taking the minutes as we speak because it's live streamed. Um, so there's no real reason that I can see that the minutes shouldn't be out very shortly after meetings, all meetings. And that was the recommendation of the experts that we got in. Thank you. Um, the Deputy Mayor and I have actually had a conversation about this with Democracy Services today, um, remembering that, that that was agreed and um, they've agreed that in future the minutes will be produced much earlier. Um, I can only say that the 8th of, 8th of December was quite close to the close of business for Council. So. Um, let's make let, let's follow that up and make sure that that happens in future because I do agree. Councillor Halliday. Uh, three minutes. This was actually quite minor. Sorry, but um, uh, in page well, I guess one seventy three, we've got the um, notice of motion for the Tuvalu project. And I just note that um, paragraph one, two, and three are in the agenda, um, but the bits underneath are not. Uh, so I'm just double checking. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to check my uh, written notes, but. Um, those bits Sunday, I remember us talking about them, but were they added into the motion on the day? Could you give me a page number, please, Councillor Halliday? 173. Well, that wasn't in the um, agenda item. So on 173, I'm seeing a motion and I'm seeing some bullet points. I'm not seeing any numbers. So paragraph one, two, and three were actually on the agenda uh, from the 24th oh, okay. of November. Um, that's all. Those bits underneath were not. I just wanted to add those bits in or they just talked about. I don't know if it was actually part of the motion as such. But um, that's just really... Uh, oh. Paragraph four was actually part of the motion that was presented on the day. Oh, um, did we change it, it was, last minute? It was, it was changed and tabled. Lovely. Thank you. That's, that's it. As I recall, would other elected members agree with that? Yep. Nods around the table? Yep. Councillor Pavanov. <coughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just following up on Councillor Wilson in relation to the timeliness of, of um, meeting minutes coming out. Um, the, the conversations you've been having with DEM services, does that also relate to community board um, minutes? If I can suggest that would be really useful as well. I'm, I'm sure um, our staff will follow up and do do the best they can in that regard as well, particularly seeing as it's um, six weeks between meetings. Yes. I think yeah. that, that would be really useful. Yeah. So yeah. a draft will come out and then um, then there will be the opportunity to look at those if people attend and then they'll be signed off at hopefully the next meeting. I, I, certainly that would have been useful when I was a community board member. Yeah. So Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair. Oh. I just wanted to say that um, as chair of the Paraparumi Ramada Community Board the last triennium, we always got the draft copy of the minutes within a week or so of our meeting and then they, once I looked over them and confirmed them, they were sent out to all community board members. That's, that's, but that's that was before DEM services took over, but that was the process for the community board. Hi, but was this about... That's very helpful. So yeah. it has been achieved in the past yeah. under your leadership. Councillor Spires, so that's great. Um, so I had a mover and a seconder, Councillor Wilson and Councillor Coford. Um, I'll put that. These are a true and accurate record. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. That's carried. So we have the confirmation of public excluded me minutes. 193. But we are considering these minutes in public, is that right? Madam Chair, we've got the 8th of December minutes. Oh, oh, we, I thought we, we were both? moving both of them. I'll accept any comments on them if that wasn't clear.
Okay, so I need a, a <coughs> resolution to go into public excluded. I would have expected this to be in the public excluded report. Actually, if it's helpful, I think we can, um, is, if there's no discussion, we can just, um, uh, we can just confirm those minutes. Item 12 can just be confirmed. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. um, Understood. Chris, thank you. Sorry, just to say that there is um, a discussion on property. Um, I know, yeah, excluded. I'm aware yeah. of that, yeah. But we've got item 12 on this agenda, which is confirmation of minutes, and it's in a public agenda. So I'm not seeing that we need to move into public excluded to confirm these minutes. Am I right about that? I'll, I'll turn to the Chief Executive. Confirmation of minutes 12.1. So, yeah, I'm just going to move to item 12, um, confirmation of public excluded minutes. We have them here in our public agenda. Okay, okay, so, um, sorry. So can I have a mover that we go into public excluded, please? Moved by Councillor Kirby, seconded by Councillor Hanford. All in favour, please say aye. 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 <laughs> That's carried. So we'll just wait for the live streaming to be switched off. A robust discussion on each topic. We're back online. So when it, we've moved out of public excluded, um, I'd now like to declare this meeting closed today. Thank you very much for your attendance, everybody. Sorry, I have a point being made by one of my councillors. Martin? Yeah? Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, ju we just had a question about something that happened in public excluded. So I'll now close this meeting. Thank you very much to staff. Thank you to elected members. I'd also like to acknowledge... Um, our uh, Grey Power representative, David Ogden. David Ogden, thank you, Deputy, <laughs> who was here earlier um, attending the meeting, and it's really wonderful to have that um, older person's representation once again at our meetings. So um, with that, I'll close the meeting. Um, thank you for your attendance. <laughs>